what it is. All right, let's look at this real quick. We've got another Sylveon. Sylveon are pretty cool. Apparently they wall out Porygon for a little while. So if there was some sort of poison damage, then it would be able to survive pretty well. I mean, admittedly, it was doing not as much damage as we were doing with Porygon, but the special defense on Sylveon is enough to be aware of. Smeargle lead out, Ambipom with fake out, almost guaranteed. Uh, Ambipom with fake out and normal gem. You can use acrobatics as well while still having an item to help you out. That fake out normal gem is actually pretty powerful, especially with as strong as Ambipom can be and as fast as he is. You can get a, a lot of first shots in. All right, so Smeargle lead out. I think we'll roll this way. Now we do have to keep in mind that we're going to want to keep this scissor a little bit more protected because apparently the um, Stone Edge. Stone Edge did a lot more damage than I wanted it to. It's neutral damage, and I thought that being an impish nature, he'd be able to take it, but didn't. Didn't that well. Almost got two shot by Stone Edge. That sucked. So hello everybody, this is DKG's Avos. We've let out with Azumarill because Azumarill's got priority. It's not going to be able to Oko because almost every Smeargle ever is going to have Focus Sash. But what this does mean is that we can bring out Azumarill, bait some sort of Spore because so many of them are running Spore. So many Smeargle run Spore. And then we'll have a little bit of Sleep Bait in here. We know that Azumarill is going to be able to take a shot pretty well. Uh, I don't want to let this Smeargle set up too bad, though. So we've got our Pokemon asleep, and because we play by Smog and OU rules, we can only have one Pokemon put to sleep at a time. So we're not too terribly worried that we've got one of our Pokemon asleep. It's a physical Pokemon, but we've got enough physicality on our team that we're going to be okay. Now, Mega Stones cannot be knocked off, so we're okay with it, and we're going to switch out. So even if he, it doesn't really matter what he's got going on, but we've got a bullet punch that would be coming his way if he didn't switch out. So it looks like it's a, a smart move to switch out there. Not bad, not bad. Now, Jellicent. Jellicent, things that I know about Jellicent. Scald is coming our way. That's a big threat. But Jellicent is also very much so a more special defensive bulky Pokemon than it is a defensive bulky Pokemon. It's got a lot of HP, though. So don't underestimate its defense. And don't count it out entirely. But... Because the two moves that we've got on Scissor right now are Thief and Bullet Punch, that both take advantage pretty well of Technician, we're pretty happy with it. So that's a 90 base damage move coming out. Will-O-Wisp is going to suck. We don't have anything to get rid of that, except for Sword Stance. Sword Stance will help us out. We're going to take some burn damage every turn. But Scissor is, n is far from useless, especially with Defog on there. So we're pretty happy about Defog. Being in there, we're gonna go for the Swords Dance, negate that burn a little bit, so it's only gonna be doing damage every turn. We've got basically our normal attack stat coming in here. Now, Jellicent does have recover, but it can only recover so much. So we did more than half HP with that little thief, and so if we double our attack on top of what we've already done, plus two in there, boom. Alright, so we're back up to normal, so this should double our attack from where it was originally, and then knowing that Jellicent's not going to be able to do much to Scissor, outside of Skull, which is going to be doing a little bit of damage, but not crazy. Alright, good to go. There we go. We're already burned, so we don't have to worry about that Skull burning us. We've got plus 4, minus 2, which is plus 2 overall. Burn, you can consider, is just minus two on your attack stat. But Jellicent is smart to get out of there. Doesn't want to take that. Now, looking at the rest of our team, Scissor might be the best way of dealing with it. But we still have other things, because we've got Dragonite that should be able to deal with Jellicent as well. Now, again, these are both physical Pokemon. And as the special defensive bulk of Jellicent is pretty good... Amoongus might be able to deal with it, stall it out a little bit, but it's not ideal. It's not ideal at all. 
Scissor, though, with a decent amount of attack. It's unfortunate that we had to waste it on that Smeargle, but that was his only setup. So we're not going to need Defog at this point. So I don't expect to see Stealth Rocks coming out, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right, Lucario coming in. Uh, Lucario is going to resist any Dark move, also going to resist any Bullet Punch. So we can switch Scissor out, but Scissor at this point with such low HP is actually kind of useless. So we don't really need it out and about. We could switch it out into something else that might do a little bit more with it. Um, Azumarill is asleep at this point, so it's not going to be doing too much. Porygon 2 is going to do some neutral damage, but taking a lot of stab fighting moves to the face doesn't sound like a good idea. I'm hoping that this is not a special attacking, but if it is a special attacking, we can probably deal with it with Amoongus pretty well. Hopefully. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage, but if it's special attacking, it's the best shot that we've got. So now at that point, we got to go for the Bullet Punch, because it's going to outspeed us. We've got max HP, max attack, not a whole lot of speed going on. Got to go for the Bullet Punch, try and get some damage in. It's not going to be a crazy amount of damage. And Vacuum Wave, oh man, Vacuum Wave. That sucks. Vacuum Wave does not necessarily make it... I don't know. Vacuum Wave doesn't necessarily mean that it's a special attacker, so I'm a little bit worried about it. Vacuum Wave and Bullet Punch are not indications that it is one or the other. Bullet Punch says that it could be a physical, it could be a special attacker, but we're still not sure. Alright, but at that point, we have to go into Dragonite. Dragonite, without any sort of entry hazards, Dragonite is pretty safe to come in pretty well. And then we just have to go for Earthquake. It's super effective, it's non-stab, but it's super effective. Should scare Lucario out because Dragonite should be able to clear out Lucario. So we shouldn't have to worry about it. Shouldn't. But if he sets up Nasty Plot, then interesting. Nasty Plot is the indicator that it's a special attacking Lucario. That's the biggest thing that you're looking for from Lucario to see if it's special attacking or mixed attacker. Um, based on Gen 5 metas, it was a lot of times either a special attacker or a mixed attacker, but almost never a pure physical attacker. Alright, Jellicent. Jellicent looks like it's trying to get that cursed body on. Trying to see if it can do something here, and then Will-O-Wisp's coming out. Uh, could be a lot of trouble. Do we trust him enough to take it out with Thunder Punch? Do we trust it enough to take it out with Thunder Punch? That's the big question. The answer is no. I don't. I don't. Ugh, I got nothing. I'm already asleep, so if the Will-O-Wisp was coming out, then that was the best way to deal with it. Since you can kind of predict that's the way that it would go, um, I just, I had to go. I had to go into Azumarill, try and get that sleep out of there, because Jellicent often has Scald. And so I wanted to get Azumarill in there and try and do something. Looks like Sylveon's going to come in here. Sylveon, not going to take a terrible amount of damage from Azumarill but also not going to deal a terrible amount of damage. We've got the Assault Vest, so we should be okay with Azumarill against Sylveon. So we're going to try and wake up Azumarill. Echoed voice, though. That's going to be a problem. Azumarill woke up. Waterfall. Straight to the face. Good. Thank you, Azumarill. The defenses on Sylveon are a little bit lacking, so you can usually assume that if you're using a physical move on, his, on Sylveon, you're going to get a decent amount of damage there, especially if it's a stab move, even if it's not super effective. Now, the thing is that, yes, we didn't have a whole lot going for us as far as, like, uh, water absorb. No! We didn't have a terrible amount going for us with Azumarill being asleep, but the echoed voice wasn't doing a terrible amount of damage, and we also had, we also had um, Amoongus to switch into. So we did have that available. We knew that Amoongus would be available at any given time, just in case we needed it. So if Echoed Voice started getting too much Echo on it, then we were just going to have to go out. Ugh. That sucks. Zoomerill getting burned. 
Should have seen that coming, but I was talking too much. Anyway, Amoongus will be able to absorb most anything that Sylveon's going to be able to dose out, so we're pretty happy with that. We're going to switch into Amoongus because it's going to be able to absorb any Scald. Um, should be able to absorb Shadow Balls pretty well. Max Special Defense, so we should be okay. Even with that decrease, even with that decrease in Special Defense, we're going to try and use up a little bit of the Regenerator. We've got the Black Sludge, so we're going to be able to survive a little bit longer. And again, it's got Regenerator, so with Regenerator, with Hidden Power Dark, with Giga Drain, all these things, we're going to be able to do a decent amount of damage. Alright, Darmanitan coming in. Darmanitan is going to scare out Amoongus, but we're going for that Hidden Power Dark, trying to get some sort of damage in, and it looks like not very much, which is unfortunate for Amoongus, but it is a max special defensive bulky Pokemon, and it looks like we're almost up to max HP. Maybe Sludge Bomb would have been better predicting a switch there, but wasn't quite what we were going for. At this point, we're going to have to switch into Carbink. Carbink being very special defensive, or very defensive bulky. Trying to predict either a Flare Blitz or a U-Turn. Bulldoze coming in is a pretty good move, predicting the switch into Carbink, but that max defense is going to help us out quite a bit. Now at this point, we're going to set up the Stealth Rocks first. Try and get that up. It's going to do a little bit and prevent a few switches. So anything that's switching in is going to be hit by our fantastic Stealth Rocks. So we want to get some sort of damage going. Darmanitan going for the U-turn, trying to get some damage in instead of just switching out, is actually doing more damage to him than it did to us. So we're pretty happy about that. Lucario, though. Oh, Lucario. That does kind of indicate that this is a special attacking Lucario. Um, seeing as it's got the rocky helmet damage that already happened. Hmm. Amoongus back up to full HP, though. Alright, we're going to try it. Nasty Plot coming in. Our poison isn't going to do anything, but we've got our special attacking, our special defensive bulky Pokemon. We're going to be pretty happy about it. Uh, Giga Drain, we're just going to have to go for to try and absorb as much HP as possible. I'm hoping that Amoongus can take this damage. Wow. Not even close. That sucks. Alright, we're going to have to sacrifice a Pokemon, and that sucks a lot. At this point, I think Carbink is it. Carbink has utility against our Manitan, but we've got other Pokemon that can do the same kind of utility against our Manitan. So we're just going to have to switch out into Carbink, absorb this Flash Cannon, get a safe switch into Dragonite, and try and get something going. Um, with, with Jellicent still alive, with Lucario still having plus two special attack, I don't know if Lucario is really going to want to switch out immediately, but Earthquake is going to do super effective damage. Lucario might want to switch out into Jellicent, and then Jellicent might be a threat to Dragonite again. But we've got the Stealth Rocks. We should survive Flash Cannon because of multi-scale with max HP. We should be fine. As long as Earthquake deals with it in one shot, we're going to be okay. We're happy with that. Fantastic. It was a little rough. The damage calc on that basically means that that would have been a one-hit KO. <coughs> but the fact that we've got multi-scale reducing it by half, we're fine. Whew. Alright, Ambipom. Now it would be really nice to have Carbink alive. Just to try and get some Rocky Helmet damage in on that... Uh, the Ambipom, but I think at this point we're going to switch into Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is going to be able to absorb this bulk a little bit better than Dragonite without the multi-scale. I could try and go for the Roost, but I know that Fake Out's coming up first, and I really don't want to take that. So we're just going to go in, try and get the special attack up, which we're happy with. Ooh, normal gem indeed. Now this is an Eviolite Porygon 2, granted a modest nature, but doing 50 damage to a Porygon 2, that's something to be proud of, man. We're going to go ahead and go for the recover here. Now that he's burned out his item. Oh, that sucks. Eviolite doesn't help you, you jerk. Meanie. 
Alright, let's go for that try attack. Double hit, we avoided. Try attack, come on. Now, Porygon 2 is not absolutely useless outside of Eviolite. He's still got like 80 base defense and 80 base special defense, but it does mean that he's a lot weaker without the Eviolite. Thief, knockoff, all those things, they do kind of limit Porygon's utility, but he can still take some hits and still deal some damage. This does mean that Sylveon is going to be able to do a decent amount more damage to Porygon 2 than what we would really like. So at this point, let's go into Amoongus and see what he can take. We got that Regenerator, so we regenerated 30% of our HP. If it's a Fairy move, which is Stab, super, not super effective against Porygon 2, but it's going to be Stab. There we go, Hyper Beam. Hyper Beam is going to limit his ability to attack us with that Life Orb. I don't think it really matters, but max Special Defense, max HP Amoongus coming in here. Doing a little bit of damage. Nicely done. Alright. We're going to go for the synthesis here. Amoongus knows that he's going to be able to get a turn in edgewise. It doesn't really matter. Uh, with as well as we took that hyper beam, I feel pretty confident in Amoongus being able to stick around through another one. That's probably the most powerful move that Sylveon's got. And then the Life Orb is just going to take it out. Oh, Psy Shock, that's going to suck a lot. Oh, no. Whew. Why do I keep forgetting about Psy Shock? Psy Shock Sylveon. Come on. Terrible. Amoongus with that HP, though. Now, at this point, we can switch out Amoongus and get him back up to max HP. Because he's got the Regenerator, we should be okay. Now, I am throwing out Amoongus in situations that I may not eventually, because I'm getting used to him. I'm not used to how he is, and I'm not sure how he works yet. So now against Darmanitan, Darmanitan might be going for the Flare Blitz, because it's super effective against Amoongus. So at this point, hmm, we've got U-Turn. Flare Blitz, those are the things that we know. Azumarill's already burned, also has Priority Water, which is still Stab and super effective. So we're going to switch out Azumarill, trying to absorb a Flare Blitz. Looks like it's going to be Bulldoze, slowing us down, not a huge deal, we're not worried about it. We're going to take a lot of damage though, just because Darmanitan is very powerful. And Azumarill with the Assault Vest is pretty special defensive bulky, but not very defensive bulky at this situation. So let's go with that Aqua Jet. We should be able to take out Darmanitan, deal with it pretty well. We're going to lose Azumarill due to the burn damage, but that's okay. At least we took out Darmanitan at that situation. We're pretty happy with it. Now at this point, we'd like to scout out what his next Pokemon is, because I don't remember. Porygon 2 without an item is basically our most worthless Pokemon at this situation. When I say most worthless, I don't mean worthless. Still has Recover, still has a lot going for him. But it looks like Jellicent here taking a little bit of stone damage. And you know what? We still have Thunderbolt. We've got max HP because we recovered all of it while we got Thief. Well, yeah, Thief. Thief stolen from. And we're going to do some Thunderbolt damage. And Parahax. Not bad. Told you Porygon 2 wasn't totally worthless. Boom. Looks like this Jellicent might actually be defensive bulky though. I don't know. Because we did up our special attack on that. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Hmm. GG. Well played. That was close.